Well, hello everyone. So good to be with you again. It's me, Charles, and I'm gonna we're gonna tie it all together in this video. You'll be happy you watch this video. Do watch it to the end because we're gonna tie the Great Flood. We're gonna explain how the Great Flood could have killed basically everything on Earth, even without drowning these creatures, but especially the bigger creatures. We are gonna finally explain why the bigger creatures died and not the smaller creatures. And we're going to explain why the megafauna died. All those huge mammals died. We're going to explain the Great Flood. We're going to explain the destruction, possibly also, of the giant humans, as opposed to the smaller humans who seem to have survived. And you'll say, Charlie, why is there a picture of a dinosaur there? Mm. Yeah, it looks like the dinosaurs died in the Great Flood as well. And we're talking 30,000 years ago. That's right, 30,000 years ago not 65 million years ago. I feel that space debris, 65 million year old space de debris might have contaminated the samples. That would explain the dragons. We're gonna tie everything together and explain everything. I do hope you watch. It's gonna be the best video ever I've ever done. I'm so excited. And so how did all this die? Well, about 30,000 years ago, this happened. It's called the Carolina Bay impacts. And these impacts are all over the world. There's traces of them in Norway as well. It looks like they, they impacted the Northern Hemisphere. And it looks like some other things happened at about this time, which is very interesting. We are finding dinosaurs in swamps. We are finding dinosaurs with feathers attached, dinosaurs with flesh attached. And people don't know what is going on at all. So we are looking here at this article by a guy called Fisher. And they have been dating, dating and he's been following people who have been doing this and they've been dating Dinosaurs and these are the dates with carbon datings and you can see this for yourself what is going on the, the dinosaurs Triceratops Allosaurus, which is the big one um, Adaptosaur the smaller one that these all date to around 30,000 years ago about the time of the Carolina Bays and th th These people in the last 15 years. They've had trouble getting these dated at laboratories the laboratories have said, we all know that these are, dinosaurs died 65 million years ago. We don't want to embarrass our laboratory by, um, by possibly finding out anything different. And therefore, it, it can't be dated with carbon. But as you see, it's been done. It's been done. And this would explain dragons. This would explain the mystery. A Akambara of Charles Hapgood. Now, you say, okay, Charles, get to the point. What is the point? Well, it's all about carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. And there's a very interesting fact. I think the world was gassed. I think, here's what happens. And here's what happened in, uh, just recently, in 1984. Something occurred in Lake Nyos, known as a limnic eruption. This is Lake Nyos after the limnic eruption. And the whole region, about 100 kilometers huge, uh, suffered an overturn, a lake overturned. And for some reason, the, the water at the bottom of the lake bubbled up to the top of the lake <clears throat> and it released huge amounts of carbon dioxide. This one at Lake Niles, the cloud rolled southeast about 60 kilometers and it killed 1,700 people. It killed all the livestock. It was like a cloud, the cloud of God, uh, sort of rolling over and killing everything in one day, just like you see in the Bible with the Passover. So that Passover is based on something like that. And... If this happened in a wide area, and it did, uh, could it have happened worldwide and could it have wiped out everything? And why, why would it wipe out the bigger creatures? Well, we know this happened over a huge area because it happened a few years earlier um, at another lake nearby. Um, this Lake Kivu as well. It happened at Lake Kivu. It happened, uh, which is 90 kilometers away. Um, it happened at the, this Lake, Lake Manoon. Um, two years earlier and it killed lesser lesser people, but it was this CO2 So it looks like a huge volcanic eruption occurred right underneath this whole area um, and, 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 and and it just sent all of the gases to the surface. Now here's the thing a small mouse can survive the concentration of CO2 that would kill a human and the reason is it can diffuse oxygen through its skin and into the bloodstream and to the organs a human cannot do that. The CO is deadly. It will displace the oxygen in the bloodstream. 
And so if there, is, if there are, are gases coming from underground, a human will die. A large creature will die. But the children of all the small animals will survive. And could this be why the dinosaurs disappeared? Why the megafauna disappeared? Why? This is the first time you're hearing this. It's the first time this mechanism, I'm, I'm bringing this to you guys. It's the first time it's happened. And people say, no, 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 we all know that it's not like this, that there was no great flood. And I'm saying, well, hang on a sec, hang on a sec. The word science means skill, I think. We're allowed to think. The media tells us, oh, we're not allowed to think because Stephen Hawking's already come up with what happened in the first five minutes of the universe. But he, has, he, but he had never even heard of the electric universe or plasma cosmology. So, I don't think so. And this happened in the Roman Empire. It went from skio, I think, to gnosis, I know. I don't need to think. We don't want you thinking. Let's burn the library of Alexandria. We don't want those people thinking. Thinking is dangerous. We don't need them to think at all. And this would explain why the Bible says there were giants on the earth in those days. And all the world was one language. And then something happened, a great flood. Floodwaters popped up all over the planet and would have released these gases and we're going to talk about the mechanism of how this could have happened as well which is just so interesting in the ancient irish chronicles they actually talk about this happening they say that there were when people arrived in ireland there were only two lakes and then more and more lakes broke out of the ground and we read also in books like the bible and the quran and the lost books of the bible that the floodwaters came up from underground so they would have, it didn't come from the sky, it came up from underground and it would have released gases all over the planet. And as a mechanism for why this happened, well, I came up with a, a theory uh, a couple, uh, maybe two years back now, shrinking Earth. If the Earth expands, it can settle. If there is a variable sun inside the Earth, it can change size and intensity and cause massive earthquakes and changes. If you suddenly shrink the Earth, I said, well, this could explain the uplift of Tiwanaku, the creation of mountains, the shifting of a day from 365 to 360, uh, 360 to 365 days because it's spinning at the same speed but over a smaller area. But it retains the, moment, uh, the, the, uh, the inertia, the momentum. And that shrinking earth theory can just explain so much. And it can explain the upwelling of waters from the ground. For some reason, we don't know why, the waters came up out of the ground and they gassed the whole world. I think that would explain finally, because I've looked, I've searched every book to try and explain why the, the bigger creatures died and why the smaller creatures lived. And there is no explanation other than they were hunted. They were hunted to death. Well, explain why there were bigger creatures in the first place if there was all this hunting going on. Does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. The hunting explanation doesn't work. It was, they were gassed. The big creatures were gassed and flooded as well. And that would explain why we have the dinosaurs uh, in the swamps. I think there was a pole shift as well. If you change, suddenly change the Earth's size, it will obliquely displace the Earth in a certain direction. And then this would be restored. And then I believe that it would spin a bit like a top and then the inertia would be restored and it would, re it would resume spinning. And the reason I say that is the same reason as the unknown mechanism of why Saturn's rings are, are just, just flatten out by some electrical mechanism because gravitationally they should not be doing that, which is, it's, it's a bit weird, right? Anyway, I do hope, I think I've covered every single point. I do hope you enjoy that video. That would explain, I think, so much of ancient history. It would explain why every culture has a great flood. Uh, do sub. There's so much more coming up. We're going to talk about uh, a mechanism for how the Great Pyramid was built. Cheers and catch you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, I am a historian and a published author on Amazon. Check that out if you're interested. Also, don't forget to subscribe, share, and hit that bell. And I'm on Patreon if you would like to make a contribution. Cheers and have a brilliant day.